So we finish up uh, chapter 13 of uh, Young and Friedman's University Physics with a section on what are called forced oscillations and resonance. Uh, this is the eighth section of this chapter. Uh, the math in this section uh, is again a little bit uh, advanced. They don't even do the math. They could just kind of tell you what the equation is. It requires a little bit of uh, differential equations, which is like fourth semester uh, calculus. But basically, a driving force is a force that is in addition to a natural oscillation. So let's say you have a spring going, you know, normally. A driving force is um, is an addition, something outside the system. I, the best thing to think about, I think, is a swing. You know, a swing, you're going back and forth in a swing. That's a kind of a natural um, angular frequency, you know, back and forth, back and forth. We Most of us have pushed someone in a swing, or if we've we've been in a swing ourselves. we know that you know, we just kind of learn how to move our feet at just the right time to, to, to increase our amplitude as we're swinging. Or if you're pushing, you know, someone in a swing, you know that there's just that sweet spot where you, you hit the, you push them at just the right time and you get a maximum amplitude. Those are all external forces, driving forces, uh, that can keep an oscillation going uh, despite uh, damping forces. Um, or, um, it, you know, it can amplify um, the, uh, the, the, the amplitude as well, even when there's a low uh, damping force. So I think one thing to remember is this, this, this idea of a, a driving force isn't just to overcome damping. It can, it can increase uh, even when there's no little damping. Okay, so um, we call this forced oscillation or a driven oscillation. And it's basically, what, we, what you discover is, experimentally, uh, and it turns out that the math works as well, that an oscillation is best maintained, or uh, that, again, that sounds like it's just about overcoming damping, but the amplitude is going to be greatest. Let's put it that way. The amplitude is going to be greatest if the external driving frequency is about the same as the natural angular frequency. So that sweet spot when you're in a swing moving your legs or pushing someone in a swing, when what, what we're experiencing is the sweet spot is where that our external force of our legs or of our hands uh, is just about the same as the natural frequency of the back and forth in the swing. That's going to be the maximum amplitude. And we call that resonance. That sweet spot is called resonance. You, you've experienced resonance probably at some point. So as I've mentioned, pushing a swing just right or moving your legs in a swing just right so that the driving force and the natural frequency you know, are, you know, they're in sync and so it's just right. You, you've, you've all heard about um, uh, the, you know, the attempt to break glass with your voice. That's again, you're, you're, it's about resonance, it's about uh, the driving force and the natural frequency jiving together. Sometimes you may have a car that at a certain speed, just the right speed, you know, it rattles. That's resonance where, again, the, the force has hit that sweet spot of the natural angular frequency. Um, sometimes you'll get a buzz in a speaker at a particular frequency. Very annoying. Um, Tun tuning a radio receiver. What is it that brings what is it that brings the station right into clarity? It's because you've hit a resonating frequency uh, with with the the station. Um, there's a story. I don't know where it, when it happened, but uh, apparently uh, when you're marching over a bridge, uh, it is normal practice to break step uh, because. Uh, at some point in the past, I don't know when, at some point in the past, soldiers marching over a bridge, left, right, left, right, left, right. Uh, at one point, at some point in the past, the soldiers were so in, in resonance with the, the, the bridge that it actually broke the bridge. Uh, and of course, uh, if you, if you uh, do a YouTube search for the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, Galloping Gertie, uh, you'll see... Uh, a bridge in Washington State that may, it's still debated exactly what, and Young and Friedman give another alternative, but um, it may have come down because the, the frequency of the wind 
uh, just was right with the the bridge, and it just um, m amplified until it hit a resonating uh, breakup, as it were. So resonance is something we experience, um, and it has to do with when the external driving frequency uh, is at the same amp, uh, basically coincides with the natural angular frequency of of whatever. Now here's the here's the formula. Um, the amplitude of a driven oscillator. Here it is. Now they don't they don't tell you how they got this formula because it involves differential uh, equations. And I've seen other uh, versions of this formula. This one is actually fairly simple compared to some other versions of the formula I've seen. Uh, but basically, um, if you uh, uh, and a lot of times, uh, um, for example, uh, it's it's easiest to understand this if you think of this uh, maximum free force. Uh, in terms of, of a particular kind of sinusoidal function. Um, so you, you might see you know, him mention something about cosine of omega t plus phi, you know, that the, the, we're, we're formulating the force in terms of, of a, uh, a cosine function. Um, again, you don't have to understand that, I don't think, uh, to get through uh, a first semester or second semester uh, physics course. But here is, here is a formula. Uh, for the amplitude, uh, where you, you you should recognize most of the terms here, F max is the external force that we're applying. K is the the constant of the oscillator, spring constant or whatever. M is the mass. Omega d is the driving force that is this ex, uh, or the the driving frequency that we're applying uh, to it. Uh, B is the damping uh, constant. Okay, so those are all the players um, that we've seen in the previous. Uh, video in this one. So the maximum is going to be where this this term becomes zero. Uh, that's going to be the maximum amplitude when this term uh, becomes zero. So um, when k minus uh, m omega d squared equals zero, you can see that if we solve for omega d, that's when omega d equals uh, the square root of k over m. Well, wh what is that? Well, the square root of k over m is the natural frequency, the kind of natural frequency from uh, a simple harmonic motion. And so when the driving angular frequency, omega d, is equal to the natural frequency, that's when we have a maximum uh, amplitude. Similarly, the lower the b, the higher the a. The lower the damping um, uh, 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 constant, the higher the amplitude uh, is going to be. They're inversely proportional. And then lastly, when the uh, angular driving angular frequency is zero, then the amplitude is just going to increase directly as the force uh, increases. Okay, I think probably when you get to an advanced physics uh, course, uh, you will go into a lot more detail. In fact, uh, if you take a differential equations course, this is going to be, you know, basically the case study I think for. Um, uh, certain kinds of, of differential equations. So a lot of stuff uh, here is a foretaste of what advanced physics or advanced math might be, but um, uh, this is probably enough to get you through uh, a, a first or second semester calculus course.